Welcome, everyone, to the resurgence. After two years off the air, it's finally back. Of course, I'm talking about the Babylon podcast, where we dedicate entirely too much time to movies, television, and video games, and whatever else may be relevant to modern popular culture. Joining me tonight is my good friend and victim, Beta. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Hey, glad to be here. So let's get right into it. So people have been waiting. Uh, it's the fight of the century. The two biggest titans in comic book history are finally coming together on the big screen. And what is that? The, the greatest uh, gladiator match greatest in the history of gladiator the world? match in history. <laughs> Day versus night. <laughs> All this iconic dialogue that we got from the mm -hmm. uh, great fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're talking about. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, starring Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill. And Gal Gadot. Yeah. Gadot. That's a, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're going to go with. And we'll just give our opinions. Um, the movie's been tearing people apart. Um, day before it was released, the movie was sitting at 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, according to the critics at least, with a high 78%, I believe, on account of audiences. Even between us... Um, Beta and I have a healthy rivalry between these two characters. It uh, <laughs> splits the house. Uh, I'm always for Batman, whereas you're always... I, I like uh, Superman. Yes. Yeah, but uh, someday you'll learn. <laughs> so we'll just express our thoughts. Who will we agree with? The critics, the audiences. Let's just throw down, figure it all out, see how it goes. Yeah. Um, you know, I, w when I first saw that movie, I was kind of... I gave it a 5 out of 10, and the reason being was that I thought it took way too long to get going, and for a movie that's, you know, the title is Batman vs. Superman, there was very little of that, and so that's those were my uh, initial thoughts. What about you? Oh, I was very hesitant, like, just with all the... With all the hype, like, um, Zack Snyder's at the head of this one, mm. right? So the trailers for his movies, they've always gotten me going, you know? <laughs> um, and then I always end up being underwhelmed by the end product. So, you know, looking back at 300 Watchmen, which I fell asleep in, I should oh. add. Eesh. And I, I love that graphic novel, yeah. But, you know, in my defense, I'd just gotten off, like, a midnight shift mm. before the premiere, so that's a long movie too oh yeah, yeah it was a struggle like the whole staff went out that night just checked it out mm -hmm. sucker punch that was another one uh i couldn't even finish that i yeah. just didn't understand <laughs> yeah well from the trailers it looked like a bunch of uh anime fetishes thrown <laughs> together with some yeah. dope ass music over top because i remember when the levy breaks was one of the trailers for oh yeah. yeah so that looked amazing and i went into each of those really excited and i just left you know, bored. So you didn't like 300? 300. Uh, I, I really liked that movie. I did for the most part, but it was so, like, overly macho at the same time <laughs> that I was like, nah, man, what are you compensating for here? It's a little too over the top. Um, I, I really like 300, and uh, I really like Watchmen, too. So, but Sucker Punch, I just, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> He did uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead, I think, mm -hmm. with Ving Rhames and yep. everyone else in that movie. Uh, did you ever see that Owl movie he did? Oh, Legend of the Guardians? Yeah. No, but Maybe. I heard it was great, like the, the 3D especially. Really? So like, mm -hmm. if you have like a flying sequence or anything, you're pretty much required to have 3D. It's guaranteed to win. Uh, oh, Man of Steel. Um, you know my thoughts on that. I was just bored. Just, yeah. Do you think that had to do with uh, your bias of the character? Mm. I mean, they're taking a, a darker tone with these movies. And well, yeah. Some people could argue that it's more boring because it's not as like campy as like the Marvel movies. Yeah. But I, I really like it. I don't know. Man, it's still, it was just a very slow pace. I couldn't understand... Yeah. You know, they were bouncing around with the flashbacks and everything, and I couldn't keep track of where we were half the time. He's in a diner one time, then he's up at the North Pole, wherever. 
You know, and that's kind of what one of the problems I had with uh, Batman versus Superman was the dream sequences. Mm-hmm. There was yeah. way too many of those, and I don't know why. I don't know. I think at least the Omega one, we'll just call it the Omega one. I think that one's supposed to be setting up for something in the future or whatever. Oh, the Speed Force? Where he was dreaming? Is that the one you're talking about? When he's throwing down in the desert? Oh, no. That's not. He sees like a big Omega symbol in the sand with the nuclear. Yeah, there's like explosions in the background, mushroom clouds. And um, the dream within a dream that he has, he wakes up, that's another one. Clearly foreshadowing something. Goodness knows what. I think... um, I guess we'll be talking spoilers, so yeah, feel free. (laughs) Spoiler alert for everyone. What I've read and and what I think is maybe they're going with the Injustice story where Lois gets killed and then Superman loses it and kind of becomes dictator of the world um, to establish order. Um, Because if you remember... The the person that was talking to Bruce was like, Lois is the key. Yeah. Lois is the key. So it's like, I wonder what's gonna happen there. Yeah. Well see where'd you is that like a comic or or did you play Injustice? the game? Uh j- it's like a comic storyline. Okay. Yeah. All right. See and that's what I don't have much exposure to really. I've only ever read uh Watchmen of course and what's on my shelf over there? Dark Knight Returns. Of course you. Of course yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Man of Steel. Uh, get back to answering your question. Um, I don't know. Maybe my bias did something. I did like the uh, the Zod's right hand girl uh, woman. Like, did you like her as a character? Cause she was hot. Well, she was pretty hot. Yeah, she, she had the ice hot. blue eyes and everything, and she was she was given soups a run for his money, pretty much. And that was, you know, the opening to the fight. Like, the fight hadn't gotten dull yet. Yeah. So, you know, they were destroying all of Smallville there. And neither of them had a bloody nose or anything. I I really like the deus ex machina in movies. Like, the whole saving. And, like, in Man of Steel, when he comes and saves his mother from Zod, like, he starts kicking his ass. Like, oh. how dare you uh, attack my mother or something? And he's just wailing on him. <laughs> I really like that. It's been a long time since I've seen that because I don't remember any of that. I just remember, of course, I will find him. Oh, yeah. I will find him. I will find him. <laughs> I will find him. Anyway, so, uh, so for this one, I was I was playing it close to the vest. You know, I was tentatively hyped. I'm gonna say. So I've learned from Zack Snyder's mistakes. I'll put it that way. Yeah, well, the second trailer didn't do it justice. I mean, oh, there was way too much you know, spoiled in that. And so going into the movie, there's a couple things I did not expect, especially at the end, you know, I didn't think. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're doing spoilers, right? Yeah, might as well. I didn't think they were going to kill him right, right then. But, and the, the capital scene, I was not expecting that either. Oh, so, you know, I I jumped during there. Oh, fuck. But, uh, Oh, yeah, that second trailer, I was really bummed out. Like, I wasn't expecting much, you know. And then by the third trailer, I was excited again. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why I loved that trailer so much. Probably because they didn't show as much. You know, mm-hmm. They showed some old footage and whatnot. But I felt the hype again. And, of course, it's Batman. That's when they had him, I think, just throwing down in that warehouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the one that showed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. That was brutal. That was. And... That's what I wanted to see. Like, for example, Christian Bale's Batman. Did we see anything like that? Like, <laughs> no, not like, not brutal like that. No. No. And yeah, with this old grizzled Batman, as they referred to him, that's what he was doing. Like, um, thinking back, j- there's a quote in The Dark Knight Returns, where, uh, well, not, not the quote, not the monologue, and he's doing his predator style attacks of course and i remember he takes one prisoner down and he has his inner monologue going and it's something along the lines of he's young he'll walk again oh and yeah. then he just breaks this dude's leg and then he's just tearing people apart left and right so i'm glad to see that like that one dude 
he punched so hard that the guy did like a handstand on his neck <laughs> like he's bent at a 90 degree angle i'm like oh fuck and i think um in this movie clearly Zack snyder's out to set his own tone for the you know dc cinematic universe and a lot of people have a problem with batman and and the fact that he kills in this movie yeah a lot of people have a problem with that. Oh, no, yeah. I'm not disregarding your point. No, yeah, but, like, I just think, give him a chance. I mean, this isn't, obviously, this is an older Batman who's just done, you know, with the bullshit. And 20-some years. 20-some years of doing it. Like, what he told Alfred was, uh, you know, been doing this for 20 years. How many good people are left? How many stay that way? Yeah. And so I kind of, I can sympathize with that. Yeah. I mean... 20 years and he still has to be the Batman. I mean, that's got to take its toll after a while, but I should have checked before this podcast, but uh, there are some articles that show that Batman has killed pretty much in every single movie up until now, even the Adam West ones, which I haven't seen. Mm, But, uh, yeah, so I think it's kind of like a not a very big point. But people just are up in arms about it and yeah. crucifying Zack Snyder for doing that. Well, see, they're, I think they just want to hate the movie. At some I think point. so, too. Yeah, like going from that 30-some percent, maybe just 30 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, damn. You know, and I used to – I say I used to because I quit following them today, but there's this video game site who, all, uh, you know, they review movies as well. And I kid you not, on their front page, they had like five articles bashing that movie. Damn. One of them was like uh, mundane things that Wonder Woman did. And it's like, really? Just, you know, if you don't like the movie, that's fine. But don't try to, ha- you know, have everybody hate it. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, I'm fine with it. I think it's an okay you know, movie. You know, It has its flaws, of course. But one of them. I guess we should talk about the good, of course. We should what we enjoyed, um, personally, of course, goes without saying. Batman. A lot of people were hesitant about the casting of Ben Affleck. I was indifferent. He's been doing pretty good recently, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the Town and Argo, of course. Gone Girl. Gone Girl. <laughs> Reason to stay single, but uh, yeah. no. And then the Batman that he plays, because he's actually. He's actually a detective mm-hmm. now, which, you know, the world's greatest detective. I mean, he has to be. I don't think we saw too much of that with with like Christian Bales. I mean, I don't want to com- keep comparing it to Christopher Nolan's, but usually in those he'd be using, you know, Lucius Fox or Alfred and whatnot. But here he's actually going out and he's, you know, hacking computer stuff himself, uh, those secret files. I thought it was pretty neat how uh, Superman heard him. With oh, the mic. Yeah, his <laughs> little yeah. earpiece. Yeah. Um, another thing, uh, which I know you appreciated, was uh, finally winning me over to Superman's selflessness. That was when you came home and you, you shook my hand. Like, uh, that was surreal to me. No, like, don't get me wrong. I could tell you exactly where, where it happened. Because I was, like, towards the end, Batman didn't have shit to do. Right, so when Lois goes to get that spear back, I'm like, oh, good, give it to Batman. You know, he needs something to do in this fight. But then Soups shows up, and he takes it. I'm like, nah, dude, don't fucking, god damn it. <laughs> you, you can punch. You can do all this stuff. Just let Batman do something. But then, you know, he, like, tells Lois Lane he loves her, and then he takes the, the kryptonite spear and regardless of it you know weakening him he still takes it Mm -hmm. i'm like oh god i can feel it and then he yeah then he gets stabbed yeah it's like as he was soaring that's where i was like oh i was all choked up i'm not gonna lie i was like fuck i can see why people love this guy yeah and a lot of people um have a problem with superman as well in this movie because they want him to be the american boy scout who's always smiling and Basically, what you hated about Superman, yeah. Yeah, the they flawless. wanted that in this movie. Yeah. And they don't realize that this is a darker take, a more realistic take, you know, as realistic as you can get with these characters. And that's all their argument is. Yeah. And I think, 
he was really humanized too. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. Like, as you know, I say one of my uh, favorite things in that movie um, is when they had their fight. Let's be real here. Batman would have killed him. That's it. He, you know, but yeah. Superman, knowing that that he was gonna die, he's like, "Hey, save Martha. Yeah, just save That's her." Yeah, he wasn't some overpowered alien anymore. He was mm-hmm. just this weak son who. Please save my mom. Please save my mom. Yeah, he was like, and it was a human mom too. Mm-hmm. So that's probably when uh, Batman's like, oh, f- damn it! You know, not only do our mothers share names, but I can prevent what happened to me from happening to him. And yeah, you know, it was a short fight, but it it did quite a bit for me, at least. You yeah. know, them you know, being brought to the same level almost. You know, Batman had the upper hand there for a while, but <coughs> that doesn't matter at all. Um, gosh. Yeah, I really love that moment. Like, I'm going to die, but just save my mom. <laughs> yeah, which adds to the selflessness that mm-hmm. comes in again later with the spear, you know, and the flying mm-hmm. and the single tear that went down my cowl. I was kind of, uh, I was a little sad, uh, shaken up when the Capitol building blew up, because obviously he was going to be the only one that survived that, Oh yeah. and he was going to look so bad, Yeah. and I was like, oh, crap. Yeah, he was clearly set up there, but see, that's one thing, like, do you think that had an impact on the story at all? It's probably one of the problems I had, like, you had all these things happening, and so many different scenes, so many different plot threads just mm-hmm. hanging, and Things like it seems like the plot just went along regardless of what occurred. Yeah, they're just you know trying to they're trying to set up the Justice League. They're trying to catch up to Marvel as quickly as they can. So they added a lot of stuff to this movie that probably shouldn't have been added. But I don't know. You're probably right with the fact that that capital scene didn't really do much. I just felt really bad for him. Oh yeah. Like. Damn. Like, everyone's against him at that point, so. And speaking of that, adding things on, I guess we still have the three-hour ultimate director's cut, I guess. R-rated. R-rated, that's right. Which I hope we get to see more of Lois in the bathtub in the (laughs) R-rated. Yes, that was quite distracting. But Mm -hmm. um, I hear we might see some of, uh, definitely more Alfred, which I thought we'd be lacking, like, Zack Snyder hinted at more about his past. Really? Yeah, Alfred's, you know, oh. like military service, whatever he did before serving for, you know, the Waynes. And for sure, there's already one scene out. You can see it on YouTube. Have you seen it? No. It's called Communion. You should check oh. it out. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, it's maybe 40 seconds long. It's not too bad. Um, so getting into the whole Justice League thing, of course, we have to discuss call it a cameo what have you wonder woman i know she's splitting up the crowds too like a lot of people think she was just wooden and she didn't really do much Uh, some people think she's just playing a cartoon really she's just there to bounce around like an action figure towards the last act but what i don't know what do you expect from a superhero movie though like a lot of these people what do they want like Academy Award winning performances? I don't get oh, it. Oh, no. This is a superhero movie. Yeah. I personally liked her. Um, one, because she's hot. And two, because she, I I really dug her part. She, I mean, she was very mysterious. And then Batman found that photo. And in the end, you know, she comes and saves him. And she kicked ass. That was oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. The guitar riff when she, like, exactly. appears. Exactly. Oh, no that joke. Dope. I have I have that on my phone now. I nice. downloaded the Wonder Woman thing. <laughs> it's called Issue With You. Um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, I'm sitting in the same boat. I was I was really hesitant about her casting initially because she had done one Fast and the Furious. Fast and, yep. and it was like a bit part. And I heard she was just like a model or something. Like I'm not even sure where she came from. But she did look, I think, incredibly badass. And maybe it was just the song that added to it. And there's one point where she takes a hit there towards the last act, you know, in the big brawl. The smirk? 
Yeah, she yeah. smirks it off. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This I heard is... that was improvised. Yeah, 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 that's what I read. Like, mm-hmm. Zack Snyder asked you, why'd you do that? She's like, well, you know, Diana loves peace, but if she's got a, she's got a fight, she will, and she'll, mm-hmm. she'll enjoy it, I suppose. But yeah, like, I was surprisingly impressed with Wonder Woman. Like, I expected it just to be, you know, Zack Snyder's not the best with female characters, I don't mm-hmm. think. I'm just going to say that. Sucker Punch, for example. I thought that was a women's empowerment movie, and they're running around in fishnets and miniskirts. Like, what mm-hmm. the hell is going on? This is like upskirts the movie. I don't, I don't see how this empowers women at all. But, yeah, I really enjoyed her as well. And going back to Soups, actually, you said people were being upset with how he was handled. Mm-hmm. What do you think about like Henry Cavill as an as an actor? Like as an actor? As an actor, yeah. I don't know. I I guess I can't really judge him because I've only seen him in like the Man of Steel role and the Man from Uncle, and he played a douchebag in that basically. Oh yeah. Um, other than that, I've only seen him in that the Tudors, but yeah. I can't really as Superman. I think he does a good job. But that's uh, that's as far as I can get. What do you think? Well, see, I thought he was pretty good at Superman. But um, one thing that comes to mind when he's uh, at that gala, Lex Luthor's gala, and he's acting face to face with Ben Affleck, I thought he was like underperforming a little. Mm. Like he f- he wasn't doing as well as he does in all his other scenes. Like I mm. don't know why that is, but that one scene stands out to me. Like maybe he was being—he felt overshadowed. I don't know. I'd have to watch it again because I didn't pick up on that. Uh, see, it's just how he was so stern. Maybe like so. Oh, oh, okay. I can kind of see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. I'll have to check it out again too, because I didn't feel that two and a half hours or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just felt like this guy was so conflicted. As far as like, man, I'm trying to do the right thing, but you guys all hate me anyway. <laughs> yeah. See, and that adds on to the the sympathy, you know. And it didn't feel like force fed to us either. Mm-hmm. Like, look how much shit essentially we can put this character through just so you can like him nor- more. You know, it felt well as genuine as, as a movie like this can be. Yeah. I mean, that's what actually would happen. Yeah. I think. People would fear him. Yeah. They would go crazy. Yeah, some would idolize, some would mm-hmm. just take the Lex Luthor route. What the hell were his were his goals there? Lex Luthor's, anyway. I think that he was just jealous of Superman and his abilities. Mm-hmm. And, you know, him being the, the rich billionaire that he is, he should have, he should not want and he does want and so the whole Martha thing when with him capturing him uh, with him putting Superman in that position of go kill Batman or I'll kill your mom he felt like he was better than Superman like he bested the God or what whatever he said yeah God kneels to me no yeah he had a bunch of uh, he had a bunch of like biblical rants that he went on essentially he also said uh you don't you want to know what the oldest lie in america is he said that a lot oh yeah (laughs) i thought i thought it'd be just that one instance from the trailer but man yeah i did not like that casting at all i probably didn't like the character either i have to admit that i didn't like the casting because i wanted the animated series lex luthor but as you know watching the movie the guy played the character well because this is the character that they wrote up mm-hmm. and he was just playing. Yeah. Douchebaggy, billionaire kid. Yeah. It's crazy, but... Yeah, some serious inferiority issues, mm-hmm. I'm going to say. But at the same time, it, count, it felt kind of similar to like other roles that um, Jesse Eisenberg, that's his name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... I mean, if you look at the last scene of The Social Network where he's facing off with the twins and the lawyer, you know, he's just got that same 
yeah. rhythm to his speech, you know. You know, the guy did a good job, but I'm not sold on him yet. I yeah. No offense to him, but yeah. I don't know. Buzzed head or not, we'll have to see because I'm sure he'll come back. You know, yeah. It kind of requires essentially. But yeah, that's one of the problems I had just Lex Luthor and his mysterious goals there. Maybe it's his just mysterious illegal. agenda. Yeah. yeah. We'll see at the very last shot, we find out that he has something else going on that he's hoping for. But with the bells? Yeah. The bell speech? The yeah. bells have been rung. He is coming? Yeah, someone's coming down, and then they have the big horn portrait. and Dark side. Yeah. I'm, I'm betting. Yeah. See, I'm no comic book fan, or I never watched Justice League or Superman or whatever, but even I was like, is that dark side? Mm -hmm. way back when the samples you could get. Yeah. Let's uh, talk about Alfred, the Alfred in this movie. Mm, hell yeah. I love this guy. He, yeah. He was a wisecracking, sarcastic son of a bitch that that's what, you know, 20 years with Batman will do to you. Oh, hell yeah. And Jeremy Irons, too, just as an actor. I love that guy regardless where he's at. And like that Aragon movie that he was in. Never did catch that. Oh yeah, count yourself lucky. Cause <laughs> I did, and that yeah. was uh, that was a travesty, is what that was. But mm. but he played Bron, I believe the character's name was, uh, like the Obi Wan Kenobi, basically, and he didn't hold back. You know, it's this cheap movie that should have probably been straight to DVD, and then it was very corny, hammy, overacted on uh, John Malkovich's part. But Jeremy Irons was legit and he's he brought it all back to this one too he takes his job seriously hell yeah regardless of the source material yeah which is great to see i mean you see see some people you know they just do some jobs for the paycheck like see and that's kind of what i sometimes i think about like these actors they sign these multi-year contracts for multiple movies playing a superhero and I wonder how many of them actually care about their character. Because, yeah, you see in the special uh, features of any DVD, oh, yeah, I care about my character, blah, 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 this and that. But I wonder, you know, do you really care or is this just a paycheck? Because I, I feel like so many years playing the same character, they would grow to resent it. Yeah. You know? You get tired. Mm -hmm. Daniel Craig, he's already... After every Bond movie, he's just exhausted, and it comes across in his interviews. Well, it, to be honest, he needs to be done after this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for admitting that. Yeah. <laughs> I was not a fan of this latest one. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to be, and I always doubted you, but you were right. <laughs> yeah. No, I bashed on that one pretty hard. That was pretty dull. I guess he still has the odd number of movies. There's the, the even ones that don't pan out. I guess you liked Quantum. I did like Quantum. Yeah. yeah. So you and... There are dozens of you, but no, Alfred as a character, um, that's believable completely. Um, 20 years dealing with this billionaire that goes out in the middle of the night and just beats the shit out of people and comes back bruised and battered. And I just love like all of his lines. Yeah. It's like, even you're too old now to die young Yeah, and not for lack of trying. Exactly. And you know, they have that believable relationship, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Batman just gives him like the stink eye at that point after that line, but there's no repercussion really. Like, you know, I could I could fire you if I wanted to, Alfred, but I won't. <laughs> you stuck with me after all these years. He's like the only family he has. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. You know, with Robin supposedly being dead, um, just based off that shot of his uh, costume. Yeah. Ha ha ha! Jokes on you. Which people are saying that um, this Robin is supposedly the Joker in Suicide Squad. Yeah. Which would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be all right. Maybe. Because they're saying that like Batman killed the original Joker, but the original Joker tortured this Robin enough, like made him go crazy, and then like in the it's his damaged. tattoo that says "damaged." Yeah. That could have been put on by somebody else yeah see that would that would make more sense because like 
I don't know how it'd work in this universe. I don't know if they'd recast like the original Joker if that theory is correct. But like the real Joker, I don't think could sit long enough to have all those tattoos, like all the ha ha has and the smile mm-hmm. that's on his forearm and damaged, of course. But yeah, he's very different. As he's got that grill too mm-hmm. from the Suicide Squad trailers. He's the I'm calling him the Marilyn Manson Joker because <laughs> he doesn't like he doesn't look like the other ones that I'm used to, you know, the Mark Hamill's and the Arkham series and um, Heath Ledger, of course, you know, these guys are just very modernized and I hope it's not just them trying to make him hip. Yeah. But. I, n- I never thought I'd be as excited for Suic- Suicide Squad as I am. I mean, that trailer with Bohemian Rhapsody, Yeah, that's awesome. See, that's the... I'm back and forth on that one. Like, Are you? I like the way it looks, but whoever this Joker is, I hope it works out, you know. But once again, I'm kind of reserved on that. Uh, I've told you before, Margot Robbie, I love her acting. Everything else she's in, she looks amazing, of course. Mm-hmm. And her acting is great. Like, I didn't expect her to do as well as she did in Wolf of Wall Street. I first saw her come on, I'm like, oh, it's some other pretty f- woman that they just have here and you know, she'll be gone within no time, but I actually sympathized with her character. I think it's the way she played it. But something about the way she plays Harley just feels really hammy. Like it's over the top. That's mm. just me, though. Like I could kind of see it, but I don't know how else you would play Harley. Yeah. In comparison to the Joker that they're showing us, especially, like maybe they'll balance one another out, you know, mm. and, and that's why she's so different from what I'm used to. But I guess Will Smith is, is it Deadshot? Mm-hmm. Is that who he is? That one I'm reserved about, I guess. And Maybe. you got your favorite actor on there, too. Oh, Jai Courtney? Yep. God, that guy. <laughs> he looks all right in the trailer. Like, he's just running around punching people, you know. If they leave it to that, I'll be fine. He'll finally impress me. He's <laughs> only been going at this for five or seven years he's got nothing to prove not to me anyway yeah but he's I'm laughing f- all the way to the bank what's that he's laughing all the way to the bank oh yeah he'll take my money he don't give a damn what i think <laughs> God, who's this random guy that hates my acting i still got a better job than he cha-ching <laughs> <laughs> pretty much like this is a note from that guy that hates you fuck <laughs> write it on a ten dollar bill or however much a ticket costs nowadays mm-hmm do you think this one, um, Batman v Superman, sets the tone for Suicide Squad? As far as what, like, like, not grim, but no, no, I don't think so. I think Suicide Squad is going to be more. I don't want to say more fun per se, but more. I don't know. Yeah, more fun. Not as <laughs> not serious. as serious. Yeah, because yeah. I know. You can see Batman in one of the trailers. Mm -hmm. He's running on top of a car. So Mm -hmm. for sure we'll have a cameo there, which I'm guessing is going to be a flashback flashback sequence and a lot of the Joker stuff, I'm guessing, from what we saw in the trailers. But, you know, yeah, I'd like something a little more relaxed Mm -hmm. from this one. They said they already announced that the Aquaman movie is going to be a lot more fun. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Yeah, which I was surprised. Like, I've never seen... Aquaman. Hmm. See, I've never paid any attention to Aquaman like I don't know what he does I've heard he can overpower Superman maybe he has the potential to anyway in the water (laughs) in the water (laughs) yeah as long as Supes doesn't go swimming Um, golden you know I I'd almost wonder if like the Flash's movie wasn't gonna be more fun that one because he's kind of like a younger cat you know super fast and yeah it'd be it'd be really easy to you know do it with him lighten up the burden or something or mm-hmm. just lighten the mood I mean but Aquaman like you have Jason Momoa swimming around oh that's one thing we gotta talk about <laughs> the the fan service alright like the very blatant yeah just urgh, showing it down your throat like freaking trident but no at first I was cool you know they're they're hacking the Luther's computer and you just see the logos in one scene. 
And I was like, oh, hey, I recognize some of those. Like, three of them, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Aquaman, Flash, and Wonder Woman, which is really weird that Lex Luthor had the logos, but regardless. They have C-O. I had no idea who that was. That's ass. And then a few scenes later, Wonder Woman doesn't just open up her own picture in that. She goes through and she looks at each of the three. And for me, anyway, I think the Aquaman one especially went on too long. Like, it just looked a little weird to me. He's, you know, staring at this camouflage underwater. And then he does that awkward swim and, ah, stab. Yeah. I really, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I just saw Cal Drogo in the water is Cal what I saw. Yeah. And uh, my favorite one was the flashes because it wasn't too long. It was nope. just like, oh, my God, that's the flash. And then he, like, does it, and that's it. Yeah. So it's short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Cyborg, I had no idea who it was, so I was actually intrigued. And something about that Aquaman one. Probably because he was Cal Drogo. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, look who we got. Not like the whole internet hadn't heard already. I was expecting like a a blonde person to play Aquaman because oh, yeah. he's blonde and everything, but I guess not. That's uh, fine. And I, I was wondering why they had Cyborg as part of the Justice League, the, the core members. Oh, is he not? I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just basing my bias off of the Cartoon Network show where they have, um, you know, they have Green Lantern, uh, um, Martian Manhunter. Hmm. But to pick Cyborg, who I just remember him from uh, Teen Titans. Well, oh, that's who he is. Yeah. That dude with, the like, the chunk mm-hmm. of colored head. Okay. Now I know who that guy is. All right. I had no idea who Cyborg is. I think you just answered the question, though, because you said part of it was um, Green Lantern. How are they going to handle Green Lantern? Like, are they going to reboot it with a new character, with a new actor, or just replace them all together in the Justice League with Cyborg or whatnot? I hope they don't replace them. I really hope. Do you think Ryan Reynolds would come back? No. Yeah, because he's got Deadpool. He's got Deadpool. And Which he blatantly thing. made fun of Green Lantern in yeah. that movie. Yeah. And, you know, Deadpool too. I mean, mm-hmm. the Origins version anyway. But that one's guaranteed to make him money. Whereas, I don't know why he'd bother with two superhero roles. Or yeah. I think they need to recast. But they could. Because aren't there two Green Lanterns? He was, he was one. Hal Jordan, right? Isn't there a John Stewart? John Stewart, which I was hoping The Rock would take over uh-huh. for that, but I guess he's playing um, Shazam. Shazam, yes, I think. Which I don't know. It was disappointing to hear, but we'll see how he does. Uh, the guy from Too Fast, Too Furious. I remember he was like, he was getting people to Photoshop pictures of him in the Green Lantern suit. Tyrese Gibson? Tyrese Gibson. No way. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it was like all over his Twitter account at least, I think, a year or two ago. And he's like, I'm not I'm not asking for anything, but I'm just saying I look damn good in this suit. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I think would play a, a great um, John Stewart Green Lantern? Idris Elba. My man. Dude. Idris. No, he's um, Heimdall. He's Heimdall now. Yeah, but he's more of, you know, he's a, a minor character, which he That's could turn into a major character. In Ragnarok? No, like Green Lantern. Oh, Green Lantern. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he, he's a little older, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's at least in his 40s. And but God, he looks so good. Yeah. He's a, he's a cool dude. I really like him. Yeah, he's good in everything he's in. I think there's another season of Luther I've got to watch still. But oh, yep. Heard about that. And Pacific Rim. Good badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a that's a good call there. We'll see how that goes. Um, otherwise, maybe they'll have more of that, like, fan service fisting down the throat in the extended cut. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. I'll still check it out, like, regardless. I don't know if we yeah. could would be able to rent it or what. 
because I'm not sure I'd be willing to shell out for a three-hour movie. Do you think what? Do you think it'd be more expensive? Probably. Do you think they'd have just one bundle that has the theatrical cut and the extended? No. See, I think they'll have two. Yeah, they'll have two. So wait. Because they could be going mm. after the Lord of the Rings model there, and I think The Hobbit, it was theatrical and then extended cut separately. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You can't watch the theatricals on the extenders, huh? No. You oh. can't just like s- like select skip extended scenes or anything. Mm. At least from the versions that I owned, you couldn't do that. I'm still. I I think I'm gonna buy it. The director's cut. Okay. Yeah. I have to borrow that. I have to check, check all this extra what thirty, forty minutes and stuff. Yeah, we are gonna have to have a, an intermission. Oh in between. gosh, yeah, man. I think the last long movie I watched was Hateful Eight. Oh, that was a good movie. That was that was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not my favorite of his, but actually, definitely good. The Revenant. Oh, that's right. Oh man, I felt it in that one. <laughs> Me like, too, too. No joke. <laughs> like, oh come on, just get to the camp for goodness sakes. I'm getting frostbitten in this damn seat. Right. Move this plot forward. Um, no, but speaking of movies coming out real soon, Star Wars. What are you talking about? Hmm? Star Wars? Yeah. We have nine months. No, no, like on Blu-ray. Oh, shit, Blu-ray. Yeah, Hell yeah. Force Awakens. Yeah. Yeah. And they have uh, deleted scenes too, right? Mm-hmm. They have the deleted scenes, and I think they have the auditions. Uh, oh, uh, Ray's auditions online. Mm-hmm. Dude, she is awesome. I love her. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that one. But but that comes out in a week. Oh, damn. Oh, crap. And I don't know what you're planning on to do, but I, I'm going to buy a uh, hard copy. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of have to. It's a Disney movie. Disney movies usually have like uh, a digital copy attached. Anyway, oh yeah, so they do. Yeah, I just don't want to run the risk of like ever having like bad internet connection. Mm-hmm. Not with Star Wars. No. no, no. Especially this one. People had their gripes. We could probably review it in another podcast, but yeah. I loved it. I can understand I do, people's too. problems. But did you ever watch it the second time? No. Oh, man, been, the second time is way better. I was dying too, so I guess I just have to wait a week now. There you go. I got my second time. Uh, we'll still have the big TV, so party on. Yeah, and Fiddy can watch it with us. Fiddy. Yeah. That's right, he never made it. He never made it. Though. That gimp. He'll so. make it onto the podcast at some point. We'll see. Speak of the devil. The gimp has entered the studio. <laughs> well, we're going to make you watch Star Wars in a week. Sounds good. Cool with that? All right. We'll deplore. Never mind. Let's Let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no I'm excited for that yeah I'll have to buy my own copy um, we'll see what they do I'm like you know interested to see the packaging and everything well that's what I was thinking about right now there's exclusive packaging for different stores oh yeah and each different reseller or retailer has exclusive like content yeah yeah like movie content yeah like exclusive maybe deleted scenes i don't know what it is i'll oh, have to look back at the bullshit yeah um i'll have to send you the article i read that um, somewhere i mean i'm sure we could find it but you get to see each different cover for each studio one just has you know kylo's profile just his helmet and then one is the actual theatrical poster and i think one is similar to the IMAX poster. It's just Ray, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's just bonus features. Now, Kylo's profile, is that hooded Kylo or not hooded? Hooded. Okay, I'm going to buy that one. All right, that one looks good. I think that's the Target one. Oh, but God. Yeah, don't hold me to that. Oh, I'll have to find this article and see, because people were very upset by that. I think uh, you and I, Finn, should go to buy that together. We'll do it <laughs> in full Sith gear. Sith gear, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a Sith costume. I just we'll go up to the uh, the movie case and we'll just hold, hold our, our hands, hands out <laughs> until someone <laughs> helps us. 
<laughs> All right, that's the plan. Um, whatever date that is, let's see. April fifth. April fifth. We're just gonna make fools of ourselves at every store. I'll have to look and see what edition I want. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, what would you rate on a out of ten? Let's go. Out of you know, five out of ten, what have you, for Batman v Superman. I know we w- went off on a tangent there. But out of ten, ten being the best. Ten being the best. I'd give it an eight. An eight. Mm-hmm. Because a lot. I mean, I had a problem with the exposition, and there was too much of it, and too many dream sequences. But I really liked the the way that um, Zack Snyder portrayed Batman. Uh, he's just done with all the bullshit. Um, he kills whatever. And then he humanized Superman. And then the whole Save Martha scene, just, I love that scene. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I can understand that, definitely. And that's just right above mine. Um, I'd hate to say the exact same thing as you, but it's seven, if not seven and a half out of ten. Um, yeah, this was a great Batman. Like like I said earlier, everyone was hesitant about Ben Affleck, or Batfleck, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But... Damn, did he play it well. And, yeah, it dragged that first hour. Hour. I yeah. would say it was an hour. And, you know, the title, at least the main title, is Batman v Superman, and the fight went on 15, 20 minutes? I would say 15 at most. 15 at most? Yeah, it seems that way. Maybe we'll get more in the extended cut, goodness mm-hmm. knows. But And, of course, the di- the monologue wasn't there. So <laughs> I, was, I was crushed. I was just waiting for it. And it wasn't coming. I'm like, come on, this is your perfect opening. Say the line. You will announce the movie on this line from the source material. Well, you know, Mm -hmm. loosely based. And it never came. And I was marginally devastated. I was, like, very happy that that line was not delivered. And I don't know if it would have been maybe too early to deliver that line. Because in Dark Knight Returns, you know, they've done their whole Justice League and everything, and yeah, yeah. they're all older, and no one's been able to best Superman until Batman did. And that's why he delivers it. Like, let it be known that I was the only one. That'd and if he would have done it in this movie, then you got, like, Doomsday <laughs> killing him. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But, but it's the one man that beats you. Doomsday's no man. Nah, that's but he did say, like, um, you're not brave. Men are brave. So he got his jabs in there. He yeah, got he his did. jabs in there. You know, I'll take what I can get at this <laughs> point. But damn, what a cock tease, though. Like, like they brought the guy from Man of Steel to announce it at Comic Con with that line. I want you to remember this, Clark. And it, like you said, if they do it down the road, it'd be very hard to do because he does it, you know, in this whole big the metal bat suit, you know, and he had the traps all laid out just like Dark Knight Returns. But no, yeah, I was otherwise impressed with, you know, the three main characters, of course, sympathizing with Superman, um, surprise good Batfleck, and Wonder Woman. You know, I didn't think she was a weak character or a caricature like other people say. I don't know much of her origin or any of her source material. I never watched the DC cartoons or anything. But just going off of this movie alone, I'm pretty I'm pretty cool with it, you know? I'm chill. She's a badass chick. Hell yeah. Yeah. I don't take shit from no one. I'm messing with the Batman, even in the first few yeah. acts. And I stole your, your hacking device. <laughs> even he was like, what the hell? Damn yeah. it, I've been made. And she's just standing out in the hallway like, I got Looking you. all beautiful. Well, yeah, that too. No, I think the person I went with, she, Kirsty, she didn't know who it was. She just turned it over. She's like, is, is that the new Catwoman? <laughs> I was like, are you, have you not seen anything about this movie? Like, he's in every trailer. Yeah. But, no, yeah, seven. I'm going to go with seven. But, yeah, goodness knows what those critics are thinking. I don't know. I don't know. They're ripping on do it. Do they want? Do they want Avengers, in DC style? Like Maybe, and it's kind of hard to target this movie too. I mean, you got superheroes which appeal to kids, and 
was very clearly not too much of a kid's movie. And that's what I kind of liked about it. It was more adult themes. Yeah. Well, definitely, yeah. I mean, just looking at, not to say it's a one-for-one adaptation, but Dark Knight Returns definitely is not. That's the thing. Like, when I was watching Avengers, like, let's say first Avengers, I was like, this is the best comic book movie I've ever seen. Because it felt like I was watching a comic book happen. Like, it was campy, and it was, like, all these moments, and I loved it. And then one thing that I thought about when I was watching um, Batman vs. Superman is, like, I'm watching a graphic novel aimed Uh, at adults. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, that was... I have to relook at it and in that, with that mindset. Because, yeah, that would add, like, a whole other layer. <laughs> Man, I don't want to pay to watch it again. It's so much time, but I'm going to have to. No, I can't. I didn't do it for Star Wars. I can't do it for this. I can't do it for Zack Snyder. Right, just wait for the uh, Blu-ray release. Yeah. Oh. That or, uh, I guess, technically, Star Wars is already out. I see. <laughs> Hit like high definition screen caps have been making it online. People are torrenting it already. Oh, already? Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. like Blu ray quality really? torrents are out there apparently, which we don't condone, by the no. way. No. And for Star Wars, especially, like, no way. I'm yeah. paying them that money. <laughs> yeah. No, they they deserve all our money. Um, I believe you had another point to make as well. Um, if I did, I, I don't remember. Oh, crud, about what was it? how fortunate we are that we can... Oh, yeah. Um, we could. I could go into it now, or we could save that for another time. It's nearing 10 o'clock. I'm good to stay up. Okay. <coughs> well, you know, not to get too deep or sentimental here, but throughout the day I just have these thoughts that pop into my head, and then a couple of days ago I was hanging out at the at the house, and... I was bored, so I went and worked out, and then I went, after working out, I went to the park, um, and I shot the basketball around. Lazy. (laughs) And it just got me thinking, like, because that same day was the attack over in the Middle East at a park where a suicide bomber killed, you know, 50-some people, Mm -hmm. uh, mostly women and children. And it just got me thinking, like, man... You know, we as Americans are so lucky, and we take it for granted that um, we're not getting attacked here. I mean, 9-11 happened, and that was, you know, terrible. Mm -hmm. But we do not have what they're having over there here. Like, I wasn't scared to go to the park and afraid to be, you know, blown up. Yeah, face death at every turn. Yeah, and I think we take that for granted, and I I don't think we should. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, definitely, but we're very fortunate. Um, we never really look at it. I mean, we just complain. We, we we bitch about the tiniest thing. We're like, oh, my phone's not syncing. Like, just earlier today, I was like, oh, I can't pause on my phone. What the hell's going on? But I don't have to worry about all these, like, terrors <laughs> of the world. Just I can drive to work. And, and even it's g- it might sound bad, but for me... I read that, you know, 50 people have been killed by a blast, and I'm just like, man, this world is messed up, Mm -hmm. and that really sucks. And then I go and click on a Batman versus Superman article, you know, it's just like, like that. I just, I just move on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're, maybe we're desensitized a little to it, like, that's, since it's so far away, Mm -hmm. we don't have, like, real life experience with it. I mean, not majority of us. Some people do, of course. And that just kind of allows us to distance ourselves, kind of like a defense mechanism, essentially. But I couldn't imagine living in an, in an environment like that. Dude. And then, was it Brussels? Where they had the, mm-hmm. the, the train station? Yeah. And then an attack, another attack off-site an hour later. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I could handle it. Like, you wouldn't be safe anywhere. No, you wouldn't. It's not like uh, this war between nations, really. It's it's war in an, on an idea. On an idea. Yeah, that which you can't kill. 
And, and who's to say who's right, you know? Yeah. And the, you know, over here in, in America, we have Donald Trump, mm-hmm. who, for better or worse, is going to be the Republican nominee. And we have people like Caitlyn Jenner, who wins Woman of the Year. Wow. Um, you know, this bullshit. Yeah. It's a bunch of bullshit. And if we ever got attacked, we'd be fucked. Pretty much. I don't know. I don't know how if we could even absorb that fact that it was happening to us. Because you see all these other countries, you know, they stand together and all this stuff. But I'm not saying we all are, but some of the stuff we decide to focus on instead of, you know, what really matters is just so petty. Oh, and so very petty. Yeah. Freaking A. Yeah. That's it's a tough time. I just, I honestly want it to end. Oh, yeah. But how do you go about doing that, you know? This has been going on for, I mean, before 2001, really. It's just, there's no end in sight, unfortunately. Yeah. dismay but we can all we can do is hope for the best really i mean from where we are right now anyhow you, what do you think would happen you know if we were directly attacked do you think america would kind of wake up and forego all the bullshit you know and kind of get going with more of a i know uh, obama gets crucified all the time on anything he does Everybody hates him. I don't know, whatever. But he did pull some troops back, you know. He said he was going to do that. He did. But now, if we were to be attacked, you know people would like, let's go. Let's go to yeah. war. Let's do it. Yeah, we definitely rallied together the last time. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was no nonsense going on. It was just, you know, pick one another up. Let's do something about this. And we did. Um we did, and then we did for the wrong reasons, too, yeah, and then exactly. now here we are. Misled, and we still are. I mean, mm-hmm. it's been 15 years, nearly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As it's still going on, you know. And you, know, you take out Osama bin Laden, and then someone else comes and fills his shoes. They have Al-Qaeda plus ISIS, and it's like a hydra. Yeah. You Take one head off, you got multiples appearing. And I don't know, man. We need a Superman. <laughs> we need Superman. We need a Justice League. Yeah. We need that Batman dream sequence. We need the Avengers. For sure. We'll do a. We'll cross the universes and they'll come together. And a crossover. Ooh. Yeah. I would like that. That'd be cool. Crossover war on oh. terror. Who do you think would win between the two? Avengers and. Justice League. Shoot. <laughs> I think about this like a lot. I don't. I really don't know because Justice League. I only know Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. I've always been more Marvel inclined. Like I watched the Spider-Man cartoons. I watched Batman the animated series, but he's the only DC character I've ever 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 really focused on. Mm-hmm. But they have suits. They have suits. And we've discussed it before where the Hulk just generates radiation, which would essentially just feed Superman's abilities. So I'd have to say DC, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Thor maybe could go toe-to-toe with the Man of Steel because he's a god, Mm -hmm. you know, basically. Um, But then in DC, you also have Green Lantern with his ring of power that does a bunch of shit. Um, Wonder Woman would eradicate, you know, Black Widow, um, the Flash. He's just super fast. Yeah. And in the core team of Avengers, no you don't really have shit. Quicksilver. You know, he's no. kind of like an afterthought. Yeah. I'd say DC has the upper hand. I think so too. And then Batman, I think, would beat Iron Man. He'd have a plan in place. And I think, yeah, that. 
And I think Batman just is has that edge more because he's lost more. I guess that's true. Yeah. Iron Man, especially in the later movies, he seems kind of hesitant about a lot of things. So. I mean, Iron Man is like super smart, brilliant, mm-hmm. billionaire, but he's also cocky and like witty and funny. Where Batman is super smart, billionaire, but he's pissed. Pissed, he's brooding. Yeah. If Iron Man can focus on the gear, yeah, he's got the upper hand, but Batman's thing is planning. He'd be one step ahead. Yeah. That's how he keeps winning, which uh, I don't know. I don't know if he technically won in this movie, but. Yeah, yeah. He could have, and then he was like, oh, you know, I'm a friend of your son's now. Try Let's just call it for what it is. Batman would have killed Superman. He would have. He would have. I'm glad he didn't, though. Me too. Because yeah. that was for Doomsday to do. That was for his one-time appearance. Um, I will say, though, the Civil War trailer, the, I guess it's, it was started out as a UK trailer, but yeah. now it's just trailer number whatever. Yeah. Um, that looks awesome. That does. I've always preferred DC, and I'm a DC guy through and through, but Civil War looks awesome. Yep, I was hesitant about Civil War at first because, like you said, it it expanded so many comics. Mm-hmm. Like, not it wasn't just the Avengers; it was the, the X Men were involved, Spider Man was involved, and Marvel doesn't have half the properties that they need. Um, Sony has done whatever the hell they did with Spider-Man. I'm glad that's done. Yeah. But, um, and that's another thing I enjoyed about that last trailer was the appearance, finally, because everyone's been like, oh, he's so important to the story. I wouldn't know. I haven't read any of this. I wish I, I, wish I had. Mm-hmm. But he just comes in. And it's like, yes. Hey, guys. <laughs> this is what I wanted to see. And everyone's been waiting for that, too. But. It doesn't feel like the third in a series, like uh, Iron Man three didn't pan very well. Ah, oh, no! Don't even get me started on that. Yeah, this feels like another Avengers movie instead it of does. just mm-hmm. yeah, which is which good. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and and I think they did such a good job of hiding things. Like Ant Man wasn't in the trailers before Ant Man came out. Then Ant Man was released, and all of a sudden. Ant-Man is in the airport lineup mm-hmm. in the trailer that came after the movie. Um, so I was like, oh, snap, there's that guy. And then every trailer you'd have more characters appearing, and of course, finally, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. We only have, what, a month and a half? Yeah, yeah. And then I think, doesn't X-Men release around the same time? X-Men, Memorial Day yeah. Or but yeah, this Civil War movie has a almost darker tone to it, you know, because they're pitted against each other. And the scene that I keep thinking of in the latest trailer is when Tony's putting on his his arm, his his glove. Yeah, the the gauntlet thing. The gauntlet thing, and watched. then the Winter Soldier has the gun and he shoots, and Tony's like, "Whoa, th- yeah. you actually shot me! You shot his at me! You could have killed me right now." His face is yeah, just genuinely surprised. Like, yeah. Oh, this is serious. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I know exactly. That is a great shot, too, the reaction. And oh, there's so much on the line there. And I'm just going to say right now, as I stand right now, I think I'd be on Iron Man's side. I think so, too, after what happened in Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. Like, I can understand why, you know, you need supervision or some control. I can understand Captain America's point of view, but... After all they've done, you got to be held accountable. Yeah. For it. I mean, they can't help it if some alien entity comes and destroys half of the Manhattan block or whatever. But you need some some guidance there. Mm-hmm. And then again, um, what's the second one? Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah, Winter Soldier, you find out S.H.I.E.L.D. has been infiltrated and it's all Hydra. Hydra, yeah. So that adds to his hesitance. But, yeah, definitely signing with Iron Man. He doesn't have 
Well, he's at Black Panther. Mm-hmm. He's on his side, which I don't know. I don't know much about him. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I don't know either. Just from the uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes game. <laughs> That's all <laughs> nice. I know. But, no, yeah, I'm excited for that one. Mm-hmm. X-Men, I'm kind of reserved. Did Rough. you... They had a new trailer, right? Attached to BVS. Uh, that one's been out. That one has. That was the first time I'd seen it. Oh. Um, I think. I was. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. My only reservation about it is uh, we can do like a whole trailer talk to dedicate an entire uh, 40 minutes to an hour just to superhero trailers and the upcoming summer of superheroes. Um, Jennifer Lawrence, I don't think she's playing Mystique. Most of the time when I've seen her. Oh, yeah, she's playing Jennifer Lawrence. She's playing basically. Jennifer Lawrence. And <laughs> she's Mystique's so pretty. <laughs> well, yeah. But Mystique's whole thing is, you know, be mutant, be proud. Mm-hmm. And she's got her human face the entire time. And I did hear, you know, there's a story going around. You know, Jennifer Lawrence was allergic to the blue dye. Oh. The blue makeup. But she's been in three of these now. <laughs> they could find an alternative to that thing. Mm-hmm. Like, Blue Man Group, I'm sure, doesn't use the same paint all the time. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on, Jennifer. This is yeah. Then again, they're probably milking it for the whole Hunger Games fame. You know, it's like, look what we got. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But yeah, that's a whole discussion for another topic. Um, otherwise, we gave our ratings a while ago. I think we're we're good to call it a close. All right, man. Sounds good. All right, unless you have anything else, any other points? Uh, no, because. What I have, you know, we could talk about later. So Sounds good. Yeah. All right. On that note, thanks for joining us on Babylon. You can follow us on SoundCloud if you enjoy the show. I'm sure there will be plenty of BSing to be had as summer blockbusters are right around the corner. And, you know, some of them have to fail, of course, <laughs> as many as we're getting. Yeah. Um, if you have any thoughts to provide us or feedback of any sort, shoot me an email at babble.on.fin at gmail.com working on a Facebook page and a Twitter account to follow as content as content allows. Uh, thanks again to Beta for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. No problem. I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for us here in the studio. Good night.